Okay. Um, Michelle, did you get your volume fixed? No. Oh, that's okay. Um, Mackenzie and Jeannie? Hey, we um, teach at Blakely County Middle School, and we both teach seventh grade life science. Okay. Um, Brenda, I think some high school students are over in my room as well to, um, to balance it out, but mostly the high school students that should be in my room, I think are mainly like environmental or life science teachers. So I don't know if that, if that fits you. Um, okay. Well, I am a physical science teacher. I teach middle and high school. So I just didn't want to be in the wrong room. No, we're going to go over the same thing. So, and if you need anything, I can ask, um, I can ask Mark and we'll all see each other when we do the face-to-face -to -face too. So, um, Kelly? Uh, um, I teach I teach eighth, grade, I teach eighth grade, fifth grade life science. Oh, we have two Kellys. Oh, let me see. Oh. I, um, I think I got it figured out. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. So I teach eighth grade physical science at Bainbridge Middle School. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then how about Kelly W? Sorry for whoever I cut off earlier. My connection's lagging really badly. I teach seventh grade life science. Okay. Um, thank you, Kelly. And then the other Kelly. Um, I teach eighth grade physical science at Brentley County Middle School in Southeast Georgia. Okay, awesome. Um, Christy? Stephanie Christie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I Stephanie. Teach, I teach sixth, seventh, and eighth and ninth um, science uh, in Liberty County, gifted and talented. Okay. What about M. Sims? Hello. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. I teach seventh grade life science in Burke County. Okay. Thank you. Um, what about R.O. Johnson? Raquel. Raquel, okay. I also teach in Liberty County. I teach seventh grade life science. Awesome. How long have you been teaching? This is, I taught um, for about 17 years prior and I stopped for about maybe five, six years. So this is my first year back. Oh, wow. Okay. With middle school and I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Good. Um, what about Jay Temple? Hello. Yes, I'm from Liberty County and I teach uh, seventh grade life science. And this is my eighth year teaching. Awesome. And is there anybody that I didn't get when I was going through um, Robin? Yeah. Is there anybody that I missed? Well, me. Um, oh, sorry. I, and it's okay. I and it went out and it kicked me out. Um, it's been acting strange all day, but I'm Vanita Holloman. I am on year 23, and I teach seventh life science in Lee County, in Lee County Middle West, middle school. Okay, awesome. So um, hopefully... <clears throat> Hopefully this, the first thing I know a number of people were saying that the lab safety was a good activity that they could do with their students at the beginning of the year. Um, the next thing that we're gonna extend on is the pipetting. So um, the simulation, did you guys have any questions about the simulation that you were doing with Megan? Okay. So um, I know in the chat earlier, you guys had put, if you were comfortable pipetting um, on a scale of like one, two, or three. So do I have any threes in here? 
or are you guys mostly ones and twos? I have not graduated since since college. Okay. Um, but 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 it's coming back. Yes. So, um, I would I absolutely you love think the big step is this. Oh yeah, these. <laughs> I don't know. This the students love. You know, they see these pipettes on shows that they watch. Like, yes, that's what that's what they want to use, right? So, um, a couple of the the standout things that Kristen pointed out is not to let the students turn the pipette upside down. Um, always have a tip. Only use the pipette for the range that it's given to you. So like the ones that we have are two microliters to 20 microliters. So they can't measure one accurately and they can't measure over 20. Okay, so you just wanna use the pipettes for the volumes within the range that the pipette gives you. Um, I feel like, um, and then using new pipettes between different samples. Um, if you want to do that for practice between the colors for this activity, you can, um, or if you want to save the lab tips, it, it doesn't matter. Um, but best practice is obviously between samples, like between the yellow and then going to the blue, you would use a new pipette tip. Okay. Um, yeah. And then can you guys see the, my, okay. And then it's, it's different. Like when you're, these pipettes are really nice. Um, we have a variety of different pipettes and they all feel a little bit different, but if you push the pipette um, top down to the first stop and then slowly raise up, that's going to get you the volume that you desire. So for this activity, we're gonna use 10 microliters for everything. So if you want to move the, um, the volume, you can either turn the white top, um, either clockwise or counterclockwise, or you can move the black. So we just wanna get our pipettes to where they read um, 10 which on this pipette is gonna be a one and a zero that are in black and then a zero in blue. Mine was all the way at 20, so it's taking a minute. Um, so these pipettes can do two to 20, but they can also do like 10.5. Can you repeat that? Um, so you're going to want your pipette. I don't know if I can get it. You're going to want your pipette, um, so that the numbers read from top to bottom one and zero in black. And then there's going to be a third number zero in blue. Is, every, is anybody having trouble setting their pipette to 10? So sometimes what trips up students is they'll look at this and they'll say, well, that's 100, right? That's going to measure 100. But if you look at the, the pipette itself, it can only measure 2 to 20. So it, it physically cannot measure 100. It gives you the blue number as the decimal. So you could measure 2.5, 10.7, 13.1 microliters, whatever volume you needed between 2 and 20. Are you guys okay with that? Okay. So this activity, um, this pipetting activity is pretty cool. Um, did you guys all get the food coloring and the Petri dish? Yes. And then um, 
And then do you guys have this pipette by number page? Yes. Okay. So the directions for the pipette by number is if you could take a like a Sharpie and line up the line with the arrow. Um, and you can use the bottom of the Petri dish or the top of the Petri dish. They're both oh. gonna work. So if you can take a Sharpie and line that up so that the Sharpie marker aligns with the arrow. I'm sorry, I'm confused with the Sharpie marker comment. Like what um, are we doing with the Sharpie? So we're just putting a line on the Petri dish? Yeah, you're putting a line on the Petri dish because when you go from color to color, or if you accidentally rotate the Petri dish, it messes up where the the little um, color dots go. Gotcha. I'm yeah. on it. Okay. Thank you. You're Probably 15 more minutes. Okay. Um, bye, Catherine. So we have um, this first design. So does everybody have their Petri dish with the Sharpie lined up with the arrow? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to take your pipette and you're going to get a pipette tip on there. You kind of got to, you might have to kind of jam it a little bit on there so that it sticks. And if you have, um, if you have the box of pipettes, you can open the box of pipettes and simply just kind of push down on a tip and then pull it open. And when we talk about aseptic technique and some of this stuff with DNA, you'll want to make sure that you do that as opposed to like putting it on with your hand or something. Okay. So um, this activity is set up pretty straightforward. So this um, first template or first design, each of these little honeycomb shapes that have a 10 you're gonna put 10 microliters of yellow in. So you're gonna go down to the first stop with your pipette. And then you're gonna put the tip into the yellow solution and then slowly raise the pipette plunger up. And then what you should see is kind of a small amount in the tip of your pipette. Does everybody see that? And then when you go down to put your yellow dot in whichever number 10 you want to do, um, you're going to go and you're going to push that all the way to the second stop. And what you get into is some of those adhesive and cohesive properties of water. So if you don't go to the second stop, you're going to end up with sample left in the pipette tip. And some people, like I find it comfortable to hold like this. I feel like it, like I'm kind of shaky. I feel like it gives me a little bit more control. Um, so you can try if you're left-handed, it would work the, the same. And then all you're gonna do is all of those um, spots that are labeled with 10, you're gonna push down again, halfway or to the first stop. And then you're gonna raise it up for 10 microliters of the yellow solution. And then you'll put it in the next honeycomb. And then you'll do that for all of those 10s for yellow. Are you guys, I can see you guys, it looks like you're rocking it out. Are you, are you good with it or do you have questions?
Um, when I pulled, I still have a little bit left. Like you said, it's just a little bit. Am I doing something wrong? So you'll just want to make sure, like sometimes if you're using the same pipette tip over and over, there'll be some, and then it kind of messes up the pipette tip. Oh. Um, like this one here has a little bit of red in it. Okay. Uh, left over, but you'll just want to make sure that you're consistently going all the way to that second stop and then um, removing the pipette to also avoid accidentally re-sucking up some of the solution that you just put on the Petri dish. Change the pipette if that happens, just go ahead and change yeah, it. Yeah, you can change yep. the pipette and then see if that works too, see if that helps. Do you guys have any other questions right now or are you just going to town? Once we're done with yellow, do we move to red? Yes, once you're done with yellow, then you'll slide your Petri dish over, realign the arrow, and then you'll start the red. And what you'll see is some of those colors overlap. So then you're mixing the red and the yellow in the same what? spot. What do you mean by second stop? What is, I mean, what is... So, um, can you see on my screen the, so this is the first stop. So if you push down, you'll feel resistance, but then you can go further if you push harder. Okay. So pushing from that first stop to the next stop, that is the second stop. That is where you should be able to get all of the solution out. Out. Oh, okay. And then it, um, the red's going to take a little while. There's obviously more red, but then once you're finished with the red, then you would move to the blue. Yeah, I'm gonna grab yours and act like I did it. I'll show them the butterfly too. I have my fourth grade helper with me. So um, while Megan was going over things, this is what it should end up looking like at the end. So this first design, you should end up with like a crab a lot mm -hmm. um a spider at first but it's a crab it's more of a crab do you want to do the butterfly again sure you can do the butterfly again here's some um and so depending on so you have a couple different options with this pipette by number there's the first design um, that guides you through to make the crab. There is the second design, which goes through and helps you make a butterfly. And then the other ones, yeah. I have a, I have a child addicted to pipetting right here. Um, let me see where it went. There's another one that tells you um, that like it just gives you a template and you can make your own design. Um, and there's a flower and a mountain range that you can do, um, which is pretty cool. There are these, let's see. Flower and the mountain range. And these don't have stuff labeled in. You're just supposed to um, copy the design. Whoops. And copy the design. You're welcome. 
Can you guys see my little helper? <laughs> yeah, she's having a ton of fun. So are you guys okay with the pipetting? Has everybody seen um, when you're pipetting, are you, you can also check to make sure you're being consistent because your um, drop should be the same size. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then one thing that I might encourage you to do, especially when you're teaching or showing your students how to pipette, you remember how we were talking about the first stop? Mm -hmm. If you go to the first stop for 10 and then put that down and then you have them actually go all the way to the bottom and use that, um, you can see that there's a pretty significant like drop size difference. And that helps reinforce the fact of just going to that first stop to get the exact amount that you need. You guys are loving this, I feel like. Awesome. I think there's about five minutes left. Yeah. So do you guys have any questions? Trisha, if we wanted to get these uh, additional templates, do we just go to this mini PCR bio 2023 website? You can, and I can also just give a copy to Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Are you having Lily and Jason do them too? Uh, Lily's doing it. Jason is eating a toaster strudel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yay. Okay. Yeah, I believe they're on there. They were they were in my booklet, so I'm guessing they were not in your booklet. No, I have it. I would just like, like to the, get more. the flower like these, the flower one in them. Yeah, I got them all. Okay. I was just like, if we're gonna do this with our classes. I would like to get more templates for them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the other thing, having them design their own, they could do like, you know, like they could make the, the symbol for your school or they could do like UGA or they could come up with their own things. That oh, okay. Pretty That's neat. cool. But yeah, we can get you more templates. This reminds me of Light Bright. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. We were just looking at the um, Amazon catalog they sent out, and there was a bunch of different light brights in the catalog. I was like, oh, I love these, and my daughter seemed uninterested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe I could just get her a pipette for Christmas. Anyway, <laughs> um, so do you guys have any more questions about pipetting? Jeff, is there anything that you wanted to add about pipetting before we're done here? Uh, yeah, just just one thing. You know, it might, you know, you see these designs and this exercise, but in the real world, you know, in a laboratory, it's really important, um, this technique. It, you're, you're measuring clear liquids most of the time that, you know, but the, the precise volume is what's really important. And so if people can do this, you know, at such an early age, they'll be really ready to, you know, do this kind of thing in the, in the workforce, in the world, you know, real world laboratory. Yeah, that's a good point. It is mostly clear. And sometimes you're measuring just like 0.5 of a microliter and it's so hard. And if you don't have 0.5 of a microliter, then your <clears throat> might not work. Yeah. But I think this is a really good exercise. I'm it glad is. you're doing it. Um, I have one question about the activity. Yes. Um, will, so when the students are done with this, will you just leave it and let it dry? Does it keep its shape or? Um, this would probably be something that I would just come around and check off when they were done and then have them 
wash the petri dishes and save the petri dishes for the next time. Um, but letting it dry, There's a pattern. I don't, I don't know if you just have like a little residual left at, at the, on the petri dish. I don't know. Do you want to try to let it dry? Yeah, we can let your butterfly dry. I have another question. Yeah. If you just doing the food color like we just did, you recycle the tips. It's not uh, a micro, a biological. So I missed a little bit of that question. So if you were just doing the practice with food dye, can you recycle the tips? I don't see why not, but obviously with anything um, else or with other experiments, you would not want to. You'd want to change right. tips every time and right. stuff. Exactly. Something. If you were doing something that was really going to be a major thing, uh, I'm sure you would dispose of the tips and all that. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, anything else? Well, thank you guys for coming on today and then we will be using these pipettes um, in a week or two and then in the in the face-to-face -face. so we'll be applying the pipette skills thank you thank you so much thank you. everyone thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.